Hey there viewers and welcome back to the self made Auto Channel. So it's a new day here at the shop. It's a Tuesday. Nowhere as near as bad as a Monday. But definitely nowhere as near as good as a Friday at 5. Uh, those are the best times. Uh, you know, as long as we're all cut up and get to go home. But uh, it should be just another normal day here at the shop. Whatever normal is. So I thought I'd bring you guys along and we'll see what happens. turbo shocks on this one. They don't work at all. Uh, so this one is our first project for the day. Mrs. O's running uh, this lady back home and uh, the dogs are going crazy in there along with Trinity. Uh, so this one came from Monroe Muffler. She took it to the Monroe I guess for a oil change. Had a coupon. They told her she needed a water pump. Uh, quartered her an obscene amount of money. And, you know, naturally, uh, we've got the water pump job now, so I don't even know what this thing is. Uh, Buick Century, I think. It's like a 2000 Buick Century with the big 3-1. So I'm just going to verify it and then uh, throw a pump on this thing. All right, all aboard the gravy train. These are a nice job to have in the morning. Easy. I shouldn't say that. We snap all the bolts off in the timing cover. Let's take crack the belt loose here. Get that right out of the way. I'm getting cool on that. Somebody's already converted this from Dexa sludge. I think that's what they call it. Don't waste some numbers facing it. It's a regular old green, good old plain Jane antifreeze. So we don't have to worry about that. Or it's full of universal stuff. There's the phone. Let's see here, not an eight millimeter. I know there's a bolt hiding up under this little cover. There's a little fella. Whoa, wrong way there, big guy. for me. All right, we just scored ourselves a sweet job on a quarterback. 03 C5, I don't know what it is, 03 Z06. With the classic no turning signals. Silicone, somebody siliconed it. See, I get silicone all over the bolts. Well, no, actually, that's a that's a spacer on that one. Oh wow, these have spacers on them. Thought it was just black silicone. I mean, there's black silicone on it too, but I guess I've never seen the uh, little black spacers on anything other than OE. GM water pump, especially this old stuff. Same about newer stuff. Let's see, is that everything? I get you all before I bust out the little screwdriver? Oh, I think so. I think so. Get your bucket ready. There she goes. Oh, it looks like that universal crap. Doody do. Yeah, it's orangish, it's greenish. It's universal. Let's not the big jumbo super scraper. 
when it's draining. I'll get this cleaned off, I'll get this water pump back up on here. Oh man, a new pump coming with two gaskets. Wonder what that means. We're just gonna go with the one. We'll go with the single layer gasket style. Hose her down good. Not a big fan of silicone on paper gaskets. It always just makes a mess. So we'll use a little spray tack that'll keep her in place. Get her slapped on there. I guess I should say if you're gonna use silicone, it appears that whatever fella put this on used the silicone in probably the most proper way that you can. It's only on one side of the paper gasket. You know, obviously this is all smudged up with silicone, but it appears that it was likely only put on between the pump and the gasket to hold the gasket on to, you know, stick it on, which isn't too bad. It's when it's on both sides and you gotta get it all off because sometimes silicone can be a real real pain to you know clean off depending on the application and where it's at you know of course this is right out in the open so it wouldn't be too bad or i should say it wasn't too bad i just got in there with a little brush and naturally better get that right out of the way you guys don't yell at me when i don't have any brake cleaner so i would say if you're going to use it use your mind a little bit Free funnel. I think I've got these in my A store. These little fellas right here. Awesome to have around. Particularly when they put the uh, radiator here on a little bit of a cant. You'll end up with more of it on the ground than you do in the radiator. So we'll get her filled up until she uh, comes out the uh, bleed screw here. We got it open. I've got the other one open over here in the thermostat housing, so it'll take down coolant pretty quick. There she is, she's peeing. Oh, oh, oh. So we'll close our bleed screws. These three ones are pretty easy to bleed out. Flashbacks here, I used to do intakes on these things by the, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many intakes I've done on these. A lot. How's that? Lots. I just say a lot. Alright, let's let her warm up. We'll check this lady's control arm bushings. Uh, the guy at Monroe says they were wasted and they were, I don't know, 280 something to change them. So let's check that out. Here's the Monroe muffler man was correct. That bushing is wasted. So what will happen is these control arms, when you set the car down, the control arm will actually go up and start smacking on a frame, uh, you know, making a, a pretty loud honky noise. We'll come over here. There's one that's semi good. It's just starting to tear, not too bad yet. Uh, but you can kind of see the difference there between uh, the semi good one and a definitely bad one. Looks like our pump's going round and round. Let's warm up a little bit, see if there's a temperature gauge missile hot rod. Oh, uh, what do we got? Ooh, the money light's on. That was on when we pulled it in. Temperature's coming up. What we got from miles? Buck 30. Ah, hot enough banshee in here. Oh, she didn't say anything to me about her engine light. I'm surprised. But like I said, that was on when we pulled it in. Believe me, folks. All right. She's all warmed up. We better go check with Mrs. O. Oh my gosh. Let's see what's next. She doesn't know we're doing this. What's up, Mrs. O? You don't know this but we're having a daily shop thing uh what, what you call it a normal day a normal day at the shop video 
So you're taking care of our child to get over there? Mm -hmm. Good. Trinity, mommy taking care of you? Yeah. Is she? Good. All right. You gonna be there for the next eight hours? What? Are you gonna be over there for the next eight hours? No. No? Okay. Dogs sleeping, where's your, where's your other dog? Your dog's under my desk. All right, good. It's gonna be nice to be a dog. I mean, seriously. Eight hours a day of that. Eight, a lot more than that. Right. Wow, well, I mean, day. it's just like the morning nap. Day. So, Mrs. O, what's next on the agenda? Nine o'clock. I think it time stamps throughout the day. It's nine o'clock. And one's been interrupted twice. So that's not bad. Only two phone calls. What do we got? Talk to us. I'm looking. That fellow's moving to Friday. What fellow? The second one down. This one? Yeah. It says move to Friday. That's why I moved it because we're old school. I can't just click on it. Sorry, move to Friday. Hopefully somebody sees it. You saw it, right? I don't know. It's coming. So we got, I see we got some tow wings out there. We got a no start, I think it said. Yeah, no start. A no and start. Ooh, no start. Did the focus. Jeep show up with a transmission leak? Nope. I don't see it out there. Okay, so you got your no start. You got, what we got? rear differential, front brakes, engine light. Ooh, let's do that one. That one sounds fun. What is this? A Tahoe. <laughs> Shit, the leg. You got some keys. We need to do a rear differential cover, front brakes. And a SES light, SES light. And the lady with the uh, Buick out here didn't say nothing about the uh, chicken to like being on. I get it, I get it. So, my auto. It's 9.30 now. What time was it last time? I just told them what time it was. Do you remember? Was it 9? Then the phone rang. There goes a half an hour. Nice. <coughs> what they're talking about the rear differential cover on this little fella is all crusty and it's starting to leak fortunately it looks like it's leaking at the top so uh, we got to get that swapped out apparently it needs some front brakes so uh, we'll get the stuff coming for that in the meantime we'll go grab a drain pan get this thing ripped off and peel the front tires off these things here I typically uh, it's my habit just to get you know, I mean, besides just your typical pad rotor job is I'll just get calipers for these because honestly, it is cheaper for me to replace the calipers than it is to even pull the pins out and lube them on these cars. Uh, these calipers on these GMs are, I don't know, they're like maybe maybe $18. They're super, super, super cheap. You know, it comes with new pins and hardware and everything. So, you know, in this case, that's probably what will happen here, but we'll have a look. All right, parts are on their way. I got some sockets, I got a hammer, I got an extension. We'll see what happens. I'll tell you right now, this thing probably has an EVAP code. I can smell it. I got a big nose so I can smell these things. So we'll get this rusty mess off here. Hopefully without incident, AKA broken bolts. Clean. 
smells like regular old beer oil, doesn't smell like synthetic. So there she is. Not too many prickles on the old magnet, so that's good. I don't want to see any part numbers laying at the bottom of these. So we'll let this drizzle. Let her drizzle a bit here. I'll get some of this gasket hacked off. They're on their way with the new cover and our brake components. goodies here I'm gonna take and uh, like I say these calipers are dirt cheap so anytime we do these just have it just buy calipers for it uh, you can't so I mean unless you're you know probably in the southern climates uh, non salt belt areas these aren't that big a deal but around here like I say by the time you pull these uh, rubber boots and stuff out clean all the rust out of the hole get the pins actually uh, working if you've got more than 10 minutes into it that's too much time and because uh, it takes quite a bit to clean them out where these inner seals go and to knock new ones in and, to, and it, of course they you know the brake pads that we buy come with all the new new rubbers and everything so to me that's it's kind of silly to even, even waste your time doing that you get these calipers or lifetime warranty next time it needs brakes uh, you just warranty the calipers, and you know, they just uh, reman them. I always take them apart. They never seem to put enough, uh, you know, lube on the guide pins there. So we always take them apart, lube them up, make sure they slide nice and easy. And that's it. Other than that, it's pretty much your run-of-the-mill brake job. We've done quite a few brake job videos I think are done enough to know that that you guys should know what our habits are when we're doing these and how we prefer to do them if I think about it I'll put a couple links in the description Let's see that side there yep some of those videos but it's all pretty much the same ah. calipers here you have to put a little bit of a little bit of brake lube up in here where the ears of the pad are gonna ride so don't forget that that'll help keep that from getting rusty so fast and then uh, just the face of the piston which is quite thin but hopefully we'll slow down the corrosion process we'll stop it a little uh, Slow it down a little bit anyways. Oops. There we go. That one's ready to go. So it takes less time to do that than it does uh, cleaning up the old one. She's crusty. Oh, I got an actual nut sitting around here. Of course we do. I like to keep old axle nuts around. Probably too many of them. Dozens of these things. But they work great for holding on rotors, so I always keep a couple 
Kicking around on the old pool box. Here comes the great Mrs. O. Oh. Yeah, I called him yesterday. He's gonna pick it up today. It's inside over here. It's in the other bay. He's gonna pick it up when? Today, this morning. Where were we? Um, so yeah, clean the face of the hub, which you guys know, lots of videos. Hub face cleaning, stud cleaning tool, dong under there, and then sanding disc. That's all clean and shiny. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, on the steering knuckle here, you gotta clean up these ears here uh, because our caliper, whichever caliper we decide to find the side, so it's gonna be this caliper, uh, you know, slides on this portion of the caliper. So you wanna give her a little spritz of lube up there also. Very important. Almost out of the good stuff here. Upstairs. My brush is sloppy. There it is. And our pad caliper assembly. I just stuck my hand right in it. What a ding dong. It's ready to go. And she'll slip right in. Piece of cake. And then we got a couple bolts here. Some of this lube. Throw a little lube on the thread, keep them from seizing up in the spindle, steering knuckle rather. And then we'll torque this to factory specs, of course, as we always do. And then um, we'll pinch the brake hose with a pair of uh, pinch pliers, swap that around. Uh, we'll bang out the other side real quick, bleed them out, ship it. We need to take a break for a minute. Customers here to pick up this car, so we got to take and pull that out for them. It's what we did yesterday. Front wheel bearing, rear wheel bearing, CV axle, some brakes, and an inspection. So he's happy now. We'll pull this out for him. All right, both sides are done. Hoses are on. What we'll do is let it gravity bleed, assuming it will with the cap on the reservoir still. And, uh, Calipers are nice and free. We'll get the split out. We'll clean off some of our fingerprints, and then we'll uh, bleed it out the the proper way or the rest of the way. Usually, gravity bleeding. If you, yep, there she goes. If you got nothing, it works pretty well. Uh, I've done it before by myself. Um, so you gravity bleed them. You get up in there. Once once you know the fluids up here in the caliper. Usually, what I'll do is take a little striking device. Kind of tap on the caliper there. If there's any air bubbles stuck in the casting, usually it'll bring them to the top. Crack it open again, let that little bubble out. And then you can get up in there and uh, pump up the pedal, you know, bring the piston out, come out here, gravity bleed it again. And surprisingly, that, that usually works quite well. Uh, depending on the design of the caliper and such, but so I'm something to keep in mind. Yeah, I got this all sprayed down with some high tech. Uh, when you do both sides, boy, let me tell you what, you better get it right because this stuff is super sticky. So, there, that'll keep our gasket from you know shaking off. Gives us a little good seal, but good heavy cover and uh. Get the gasket, so we'll be fine. Kind of shocked. It's a doorman of all things. Usually we sit here and talk crap about doorman, and we still will, don't get me wrong. Uh, because if you put this on a flat surface, you know, she's not perfectly flat, but I think it'll do the job. But they made it out of some actual heavier Chinese steel. Uh, I was almost thought it was the wrong one when it came in the package. It was almost too heavy. I'll get that lined up like so. Bolts back in it. It's kind of nice. It's got the drain plug or the fill plug in the rear on these aftermarket covers, which can be handy, particularly in the in the rust belt region, because it is plausible that your fill slash check plug could be rusted solid. Um, a lot of places don't check these during normal normal service. Don't check rear differentials. We do SMA along with your transfer case, front differential oil, all fluids when it comes in for a service. 
Uh, if your rear plug is stuck in, I usually I can get them out with the air hammer. Usually I'll get a chisel bit, you know, get on there sideways and you know whack it right around. Usually it'll come right out. Or I'll take like a uh, half inch nut and just fire it on there with a the welder. had to fill up the guy's tires with some air and it resulted in a three dollar tip which is fantastic we always like tips buys us ice cream not that I have like an ice cream addiction or anything but I do very well uh, so we're going to take and fill it up with some gear oil. And when we're all done, you can either take and you know hose this off with some brake parts cleaner, and then uh, hit it with some undercoat or some primer, or some paint, or just douche it down with fluid film. Whatever your poison is there. our choice around here fluid film never really found a good undercoat that will actually stay so anytime I do you know like backing plates stuff like that we spray them down with undercoat and he said or with uh, fluid film these babies come back a year later still all slimy dust and everything stuck to it wipe it off just like brand new so. That's it. Might look a little funky at first, but like I say, rip this baby down dirt road a few times. Once it builds up like that little layer, stuff just stays around until somebody actually physically wipes it off. I'm super excited as, oh, because I got a package in the mail, that's why. And as most of you know, my little black impacting air ratchet went kaput. Well, you may not know because it went kaput on this little fella right here. I don't know what's going to come out first, so who knows. Anyhow, it broke. I cried. We had a moment of silence, actually, because I thought it was doomed, and I called the Astro, and they says, what do you say? I told him I didn't fill out my warranty card because no one in the world ever does, and he says, and? And that was it. So I sent it in. They fixed it. But I sent him a little letter letting him know that this ratchet is famous. It says, Dear Astro, now, as I've told you before, this is my little baby here. You'd be nice to it and treat it like it was your own. Now, in regards to the warranty, this tool has only had the best care in operation and only operated at operating pressures no greater than 90 PSI. It gets oiled every 15 minutes of operation and has never been hooked to a line full of moisture. Actually, you know that's a lie. Truth be told, I've never oiled it, and the line pressure, well, about 160 PSI on average. I say you folks make one hell of a tool. Fact is, I think this very tool in the box you have may have single-handedly may have single-handedly been the best salesman out there. She's famous, you know, as seen on YouTube. As a bribe to repair this beast and get it back in a timely fashion, I've included some super sweet SMA stickers to plaster all over your ride. Now be careful with them. Beside adding 15 extra horsepower per sticker, they also attract the ladies. So be warned. Kind regards, there it go. So today, I got this box all the way from California, which came back quite timely. I don't, when did I send this thing in? On the, on the 9th, I think I sent it in, or the 8th something. What's today, the 13th, 14th? So that was quick. I mean, this is a little over a week or something like that. I can't do the math very well, but here she is. She's right here. That's my original one too, all got her beauty marks on it. Stickers still pour off. And I got an official letter from the folks at Astro. It says, we received your baby in critical condition and immediately showed symptoms of having no beans. As you can see from the vast testing we performed, we were able to confirm that indeed, we were able to confirm that it did in fact need more beans. 
a transplant was her only option. So you can see, uh, there's our little fella right there. I'm getting a little choked up. I uh, just seen her in surgery like this and I wasn't there. Uh, but indeed, it was a lack of beans. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's reversing spring just stopped being springy, which can gunk things up. This can happen over time, especially with higher line pressures. Why did they assume I have, oh, I told them. I included the dead one in the baggie. So there's what died. The reversing spring stopped being springy, which I'm surprised because I jammed this thing pretty hard against that head, I'm pretty sure. Well, this is what they say broke then. Nevertheless, if a car comes in for rotors, it's a good time to replace pads. So we just swapped in new ratchet internals as well. Wow, she got a full makeover. Thanks for the stickers. We'll display them proudly around here at Astro. I was considering bringing one or two home, but I'm not ready for the added responsibility of a new child. <laughs> um, and he goes on to say a couple things. Go Ford. Product manager. Blah, blah, blah. So, that's it. Our little fella's back. She's back in action. Astro took care of it. Uh, probably because they knew I took care of it so well uh, with my rigorous oiling and uh, uh, my attention to detail as far as paying attention to line pressure and oil, oiling. I assume they oiled it so we don't have to. And now we can uh, retire our other one and get this baby back. I miss this thing so much. Are you ready, Mrs. O? I'm ready. All right. Uh, go ahead and uh, pump them up here so the pistons come out. They feel stiff yet? Yeah. Okay, uh, hold it down. Whoa, man, almost got me. All right, that's good. You let up. We'll do the other side. Second appearance. Wow. What? Oh, I just busted out the brake queen for the folks. We're actually using it on brakes. <laughs> That's unusual. I think last time we did one of these videos, we did uh, some brake bleeding in it also. Oh, I'm such a rookie. Uh, it's got the brakes in there front. I totally forgot about the uh, check engine light. I just getting ready to pull it out. I already took the lift out. And I see that the uh, money light was on. And he asked us, look at that. Forgot all about it. So, pull the codes on this thing. Like I say, I bet, I bet we're probably going to find a... Uh, evap problem. I could smell it, but it looks like the filler neck and stuff is relatively new. Uh, tank and everything there looked like it was in good shape, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what code it is first before we get too excited. I should have just guessed. The classic PO440. Um, let's see if we can uh, toggle on the vent valve. Output controls, evap, uh, you know, canister vent that's back there. We'll see if that perhaps is just stuck. Oh, never mind. That one's not back there. It's under the hood from the sounds of it. So those ones never fail. Uh, fuel tank pressure is 0 0.07 inches of water. So that appears to be working. Uh, if we can do a purging seal here, we'll see what kind of leak we're dealing with. We might have to bust out the old smoker. Get her all smoked up, baby. Purge and seal. Let me fire this pig up. Okay, so let's uh, seal the system. Event canister vent closed. Let's purge this little guy. We should see our fuel tank pressure decay, start to decay. It should be dropping like a rock right now, especially at 60%. Let's go back to zero, see if it goes back to zero. How much, uh, how much fuel's in this thing? Forty-eight percent, so half a 
tank. Try this little fella again. That's basically that perch solenoid wide open. It should be collapsing the sides of the tank at this point. This quickly goes back to atmospheric pressure. All right. Well, we must have a massive, massive leak. Let's go uh, visual inspection. Most common cause. Uh, felt felt tight. O-ring looks intact. Sometimes these with the tethers on them might get on a little cockpit. Let's, let's give her like a good push and twist. See if we have any change. That'll be a good experiment get you guys set up here. Wing on. Okay. Uh, let's see, vent still closed. Let's purge this little fella out again. here too because when the uh, perch solenoid's at 100% usually man these things will the engine will start to run a little, a little funky well obviously it has a big leak as we can tell you know, we shot the perch solenoid and it uh, it goes right back to atmospheric pressure so with that being said we better smoke it this is our hookup. We'll put it onto the EVAT purge line. Uh, up here we've got our vent solenoid, we've got our canister. So she gotta be peeing underneath. It sounds like somebody else just pulled in. We got her back up in the air. And look at that. It is appear to be coming straight out of our gas cap. Like I say, this filler neck and stuff looks good. I mean, that looks, you know, rust-wise. See, can we see the back half of it? Because these are like a two-piece. So that thing's in pretty good shape. It's not all crusty. But yeah, you shine the light through that sucker. It's coming out of there like a little waterfall. this time even though we didn't have to have it on lift for that but uh, I'll take an order of gas cap we'll go harass Mrs. O see what's for lunch and then uh, just leave everything hooked up we'll come back and uh, retest it and move on did you hear the noon whistle um, I was so busy doing my work Oh, are you, are you still taking care of my daughter? Oh, she just got that. Huh? All oh, right, you're what they call one of those e-moms, the electric moms, yep. What do you do?